What's going on everybody? This is Travis from Candid at the Movies and today I will be reviewing the newly released film known as The American Society of Magical Negroes. Now this movie does star Justice Smith and David Alan Greer and the basis of this story is about Justice Smith's character Aaron who is basically a timid, awkward guy that is going around about life being just to himself, being nice to people and not being a threatening or just not really dealing with things in general or standing up for himself. Then he is basically brought into this new society by David Allen Greer's character to basically be, as in movies, where he is this magical Negro that makes white people feel comfortable and he's having fun with this job, helping out this one guy. And then he starts to fall in love with this one girl and basically things happen. Now, this movie to some people is a little controversial, more so because I guess a lot of people never knew about the magical Negro trope that is in movies. It's very prevalent. It's something as a black person I've seen many a times, but it's something that a lot of people just didn't know about and they became offended about it for some odd reason, the internet. But you know, little tropes like that from Legend of Bagger Vance, also movies like The Matrix, which if you think about it, yeah, Morpheus. And also other movies just like The Green Mile and a whole list of other things. This was brought up basically in the 90s by Spike Lee and it was something that he was just like, we need to get away from it. Sadly, it still hasn't went away. It's died down a little bit. It hasn't went away. Basically this movie showing that trope and bringing it to the forefront, but it doesn't do that. That talk of the magical Negro thing is basically your introduction into the movie. Not even spoiling anything after like the 35 minute mark in the movie. That's when it's done. Even the fantasy aspect of it, which would be awesome because a lot of black people actually love fantasy films. You may not know that. A lot of us love them. It would have been a cool, awesome thing to see black people with magic powers I guess at this rhetoric, it would have been cool to see that, but this movie basically stops there and just like, hey, look at Justice Smith making this black guy feel comfortable, and hey, he fell in love with a girl. That's what the movie turns into. It didn't lie to you in the trailer. It just lied to you that this is 90% of the movie. Like, the name was the shock value, and the rhetoric was the shock value, and then you have two, you still have another two hours and 10 minutes is to go. Like this is a long movie. This is two hours and 30 minutes and it's labeled as a comedy, but my theater had a mixed crowd of people, black, white, and some other races. And nobody laughed in this movie. Not because we were mad. I think all of us were probably falling asleep because of Justice Smith's monotone voice. He is not a leading man. He never should have been penciled in as a leading man. I know he does awkward characters very good. I still don't forgive him for Jurassic World and making that horrible nerd character. But if you're hearing his monotone voice and he's supposed to be your romantic lead, it's not pulling me in. I don't even believe he could get the girl he got. Because this is how he sounds. Oh, yes, and I love you, and I love you. You're dealing with that two hours and 30 minutes of the movie. You're not going to care about this thing. It's not good. I'm not going to lie to you. I had low expectations. I thought this was just going to be at least a good fantasy comedy or at least a satire film. And it doesn't even give me satire. And it's dis It's not disappointing. It's angry. Because <laughs> you, like, you got a good principle. You got a good idea. And then you're just like, oh, no, nope, let's make it a love story. And then we just have an ending that's unwarranted out of nowhere where the main character basically starts expressing himself about how he feels about different trials and tribulations of being black and how basically he doesn't like certain things happening to him. You have been silent and complacent this whole movie and just because you have this one moment in your life, it doesn't feel like it's granted. It feels like this movie was just a project for the director to get his thoughts out about 
basically the pandemic happening and George Floyd and Black Lives Matter happening and it felt like he was just like I feel awkward because I'm a mixed guy and maybe this will make me feel better and somebody gave him a budget and a movie and I'm I'm gonna be real with you y'all thought I hated Imaginary and Night Swim I hate this movie uh, this movie was shit sorry for cussing I know I try not to cuss on this channel this movie was shit I this movie is a F minus. I won't recommend this to anybody. If you go see this movie, see it because you want to actually just see if I'm wrong. That's what that would be my reason for people to say go see it. See it because I want to see if you see it from the angle I watched it as. Not a good movie. If you go in and you like it, cool, cool. I'd love to hear what you say, but this movie is crap. I don't want to talk about it anymore. No I've already talked about it too much. Uh, leave a like, <laughs> leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. If you thought this was just funny just to see my anger, hey, appreciate you watching. <laughs> but this is Travis from Canada at the Movies. I, I pray there are better movies coming out. I don't want nothing else as bad as this was. Well, Y'all making Tyler Perry movies look better now. Peace. <laughs>